All right, this next example is a bit more involved, so we're going to take a bird's eye view first. So I'm starting with a square bracket here, and then this whole square bracket is being ended here. So this whole expression is being multiplied by 2 over n. Then I have another square bracket that ends here, and then I'm multiplying by 2 over n, square bracket, square bracket, 2 over n, blah, blah, blah square bracket, square bracket, 2 over n. So from a bird's eye view, I can see that I'm multiplying every single expression by 2 over n. So I'm going to factor that out. I'm not going to waste time. I'm just going to factor it out. So I know that somewhere along the way, I have to multiply something by 2 over n all the way through. And now I'm looking at just whatever's inside those square brackets. plus, then I have the next one. And this might sound like, hey, this is so much work. Why are we doing this in stages? Uh, trust me, until such time that you're able to do this in your head, you're better off doing it in stages instead of getting it wrong, potentially. And now you look to see, OK, so we factored out a 2 over n. What else is the same? So I have a 1 minus, I have a 1 minus, I have a 1 minus, I have a 1 minus. So that doesn't change. I don't have to worry about that. In my summation, when I have a summation here, I'm going to have a 2 over n on the outside. And this whole thing is going to get multiplied by something else, which looks like it's going to be 1 minus, because that doesn't change. This expression, anything in green really, is the same all the way throughout. And now we look at, at what's left over in parentheses. We're left over with something squared. OK, so I'm going to have to put something squared because the square is the same in all the expressions. Also, I'm subtracting 1 in all of them, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So I'm going to put a minus 1 at the end here. Uh, looking back at my expression, I have an over n, over n, over n, over n. So hopefully you're recognizing that I'm not trying to solve the entire problem in one go. I'm factoring out stuff that's the same, so I'm not having to look at it four times. I'm keeping track of what stuff remains the same, so I don't have to keep writing it again and again. And then I'm looking for what changes. That's what my counter is going to rely on. So here I have to divide something by n. And if we look at the numerator, it's 2, and then 4, then 6, and then 2n. So it sounds like these are all even numbers. Not, not sounds like, that's what they are. They're even numbers. And you can generate even numbers by multiplying 2 by a number. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. So if I wanted to, I could write 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3. So now again, and 2 times n. Again, you see that the 2 is the same. So in my numerator, I'm going to have a 2 here. And now we look at what really changes. I change a 1, and then a 2, and then a 3, and then all the way up to an n. That is my counter. So i starts at 1, and i goes up to n. Because I'm, again, looking at this goes from 1 to then 2, and then 3, and then and all the way up to n. I'm missing some ellipses. And then I, I know I have to stop at n because that's the last term. Hopefully that helps. Let's continue. How much time do I have? I guess I'll just talk through this. So here's just a reminder of vocabulary that we've already discussed in class. An underestimate is also called a lower sum, and an overestimate is called an upper sum. These two can be used interchangeably. The left endpoint is also known as the left rectangular approximation method. And using a right endpoint is also called the right rectangular approximation method. Now, if you're asked uh, to use Riemann sums, but you're not given the number of subdivisions, you assume it to be an infinite number. So you'll, you'll see this in a bit when we see some examples. 
On the other hand, if you are given the number of subintervals, so in this case, let's say it's n, then the width of each of those rectangles is always going to be given by this formula, b minus a over n. b is the upper limit of integration, a is the lower limit of integration, and then n is the number of subintervals or subdivisions. Now, here are two formulas that we sort of talked about in class, but I didn't really write it out, in fact, exactly in this way. So the height of the rectangle, the height of each of those subdivisions, if you're using right endpoints, is given by f of a, the left endpoint, plus b minus a over n. So you can think of this as your delta x times i. So let's say we have x squared plus 1, and then we're looking at the interval from 1 to 2 with four subintervals. So my delta x, which is the width of each subinterval, will be 2 minus 1, the right endpoint minus the left endpoint, or the upper limit minus the lower limit, over n. So I have four subdivisions. So this will be 2 minus 1 is 1 over 4. That's a quarter. Now, in order to get to this first x coordinate, don't I have to start at my lower limit 1 and then add to it the width of the rectangle, 1 fourth? In order to get from 1, which is my starting point, to the second x-intercept, or well, not x-intercept, second x-coordinate right here, I have to add a fourth, which is this distance, but then I have to add another fourth, which is that distance. So now I have to do 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, or 1 plus 1 fourth times 2. And then if I have to get to the third one, the x coordinate there will be 1 plus 1 fourth times 3, because I have now three of these widths to account for. And then finally, the last one will just be 1 plus 1 fourth times 4. And then hopefully you can see two, 4 goes into 4 by itself, 1 plus 1 is 2. Note that these are x values. In order to find y values, we have to take those x values and plug them into the function. So that's where f of 1 and f of 1.25 and f of 1.5 comes in. So if you look at this formula, that, that's really all it's saying. f of a, well, that's your lower limit, so 1, plus b minus a over n, that's your width, or delta x, that's how wide your interval is, times i i is your counter. So didn't we start with, uh, where did we go? Right endpoint means we have to start here. So 1 plus 1 fourth times 1. 1 plus 1 fourth times 2. 1 plus 1 fourth times 3. 1 plus 1 fourth times 4. And that's giving us the x coordinates. And then if we plug those into the function, f of that, we're going to get the function values or the heights. For left endpoints, this is slightly complicated. It, not really by much, but just a little bit. Excuse me. You'll notice that it's the same expression, except it's i minus 1. The reason for that is we have to start exactly at the first lower limit, as opposed to ending at the last one. So if you start here, you're not adding anything to 1 itself. So in order to get to there, you would have to do 1 plus 1 fourth but in order to make this disappear, it have to be times zero. That's the only way you can keep at one without adding a width. So that's why if i starts at one, i minus one will make it zero. That's why we have this expression for i minus one. And then you'll notice as you start doing some problems, the i minus one term actually makes the left endpoint calculations just a wee bit more annoying. If you're given a table, it's no problem one way or the other. It's equal, equally easy or difficult, however you see it. If you're given a function, however, it's just marginally more annoying. Not by much, but just a little bit. Uh, 940. All right, I'm going to stop here. We'll see you in the next video.